if you guys have figured this out, but I do try and design my classes four weeks at a time. So four weeks, we focus on a theme and we're starting a brand new four week theme right now. And it's based on the step through from down dog all the way forward to lunch. This is a difficult move. It can add lots of grace to your practice, but by itself, learning it can develop lots of arm strength, shoulder strength, hip flexor flexibility, spinal flexion flexibility. It's a really great goal to have, but it's definitely a multi-class process. It's a multi-level process. So if you already know how to step through, this is a refinement and it will be a workout to no end. And if you are still learning and it's frustrating and I want you to practice your off the mat yoga in embracing that frustration and allowing yourself to the time and the compassion to learn new things. All right, that's my preamble for today's class. Let's start on our backs with those knees bent and those feet up on the side of our mat. Just taking a moment here. We won't be here too, too long. But let's take a moment to settle and arrive at a practice. Look at your back body, feel your back body on the mat and just notice where you may be pulling away from the mat or where you might be sinking into the mat. And then move up into your body and just notice what it, what it wants to tell you today. Is it stiff anywhere? Does it want to itch or move? Is it stiff? Is it open? Just notice what your body wants you to feel right now. And then moving your focus to your breath. Do you notice if it's fast or slow? Deep or shallow or anywhere in between? Maybe notice if that breath is moving your back body or your ribs. And zipping up your lips, begin to move your breath through your nose. Beginning to inhale deep and exhale a little bit long. Taking the next few breath cycles to find that nice rhythmic yoga breath. Let it give you a little bit more oxygen, a little bit more calm. Allowing that long breath to settle you into your yoga practice today. We can reach those arms up to cactus, just starting to open those shoulders and let your head drop over to the right side. Starting to wake up that neck, let it move a little bit to the side. And reconnect with that nice, long, deep breath. And on your next exhale, let's move the head across and over to the other side. Letting that gaze come over the other shoulder. Noticing how your neck feels today. And then we'll bring our head back to center. And then bring your belly button into your spine. See if you can feel your low back touching the mat. Lifting your feet off the mat and bringing the knees into your chest. So we're gonna do a lot of bringing the knees into the chest today and using those hip flexors using all these muscles, just keep the knees tucked there. But we also want to have an engaged core. So think belly button to spine. 
and then keeping the right knee into the chest, reach the left leg away. Let the heel, heel hover off the ground. Engaging that knee into the chest. And then on your next exhale, let's switch that position. Left knee will come into the chest, right leg is gonna come down. I want you to really think about bringing that knee into the chest area. Double check belly button just fine. Next exhale, let's switch the legs. You guys got this. We're warming up with a little bit of fire today. Reach up belly button to spine. On your exhale, switch the legs. You got this. On your exhale, bring both knees into the chest and set those feet down. And take a moment here. Feel the little fire that might have started up in your core already today in practice. And just reconnect with that breath. We're gonna sweep those arms down toward our feet. Belly bend to spine and start to lift your head and chest off the ground so you're curved towards your legs. Belly button to spine. Bring those knees into your chest and bring your hands behind your knee. Almost like you're a little half ball. You want to be a little rolly ball. So think belly button to spine. And if it feels good to you, we're going to begin to roll a little bit, keeping that core engaged. And if you can, we're going to roll up to sitting. Can you laugh a little bit? Because that can be pretty silly. Reach your left leg out, right foot in to a nice half pike here. Inhale your spine nice and tall. Exhale, begin to hinge at your hip, leaning forward. Doesn't matter how far you go, when you cannot go anymore, then you can release the head and neck. These forward bands I know sometimes are difficult to not feel competitive in. So wherever you are, I want you to reconnect with your why. On why did you come to yoga today? Why do you do yoga? And I'm guessing that has something to do with wanting to be healthy, wanting to add some movement to your life, maybe get rid of some aches and pains, prevention in aches and pains, maybe to connect on screen with some people that are not in your work team. So connect with your why for being here. And that can sometimes let us just accept if there's a pose or two we're a little frustrated with because we're here just moving and enjoying our, our goal, our reason for being here. Now I want you to sweep your arms around to the side. We're coming behind us. We're gonna place this right hand on the ground, push into your hand, push into your shin and come on up to a side plank on your shin. Reaching that arm up and over. Maybe you wanna add a little back bend. So gaze comes up to the top of the ceiling, if you like that. Really push the hand away, lift the hips high. And then exhale, we're gonna sweep that head across the front and come back to that forward bend. Noticing if it feels different than the first time you were here. And then let's walk those hands back toward us, sitting up nice tall spine and switch the legs. Right leg comes out, left leg comes in. And take a moment to inhale that spine nice and tall. Sit proud. You made it to class today. Inhale deep. And exhale, hinge at the hips until those hips don't want to hinge anymore. And then release your head and neck. Doing these longer stretches at the beginning of class 
they can feel different than they in a class because we're not warmed up yet. This is just a warm up stretch. So give yourself a little compassion and grace to go a little less deep than you might think you should. Only go as far as you feel that nice stretch on the back of your leg. Reconnecting with your breath. Notice where you feel that breath move in your body. And then sweeping your hands over to the side as you travel around, left hand comes behind you, push into your hand, push into your shin, coming up to side plank, reaching your hand up and over, maybe shifting into a little bit of a back bend with presenting the chest to the sky. Finding that breath. And slowly coming on down, sweeping around and refining that forward bend just for a moment. As we warm up our hamstrings here. And then walk those hands back towards you as you sit up tall. And then mindfully moving into tabletop. We mindfully move, we're feeling our connection with the ground, we're noticing how we get to where we want to be. We're going to take a moment here to roll our wrists, so making some circles over your palm. Noticing where the weight gets distributed in your palm as you make those circles. On the edges, maybe by the knuckles. And then go the other way. We're going to spend a little bit of time in down dog today. So I want to make sure our wrists are nice and warmed up. And then coming into tabletop, you may want to move your knees closer for this to be easier or farther away to add some challenge. We're going to do wrist push ups. So push into your knuckles where your, your fingers and your palms connect and rise up on those knuckles and then slowly coming down. You can do three to 10 of these, your choice. We're slowly working up our wrist strength here. And then we're gonna meet on our knees, rolling those wrists again in a seated position. Paying attention with how they feel, if there's any twinges, knowing at any time you can stop what we're doing to roll the wrists, or maybe pulling the hand away and wiggling the fingers today. That just lets those wrists feel a little bit better when we start doing more wrist work. Reach behind you, nice proud chest. Let's open that back, gaze at the ceiling. Option to stay here, option to push the knees into the ground and raise those legs, squeezing the glutes to raise the hips. Finding your breath. I really feel this in my quads today, they're a little tight. Not sure why. And then slowly lower back down, come on up, and then refine your tabletop. All right, let's begin to work our step through in tabletop. So think belly button to spine, engage the core. Let's reach that right knee up, foot toward the ceiling. All right, we're going to inhale deep. As you exhale, bring that knee under your chest, really tuck it into your chest and make that cat back. Really arch your back, push the ground away like you're trying to add extra room between your body and the mat. And then exhale, bring that foot back up. So exhale all that air. And as you exhale, bring that knee in. Pat your back, push the ground away, really keep that knee in. This should be work. That leg is probably shaking, holding there. And then bring it on up and bring the leg down. Take a moment here to check in. And now let's bring out the left foot. 
So we're gonna inhale the air. Exhale, bring that knee into your chest, cat your back, push the ground away. Really think about bringing that leg towards your chest. And then you can come back to foot up. One more time when you're ready. When you exhale, let's bring the leg through, knee in. Begin to cat the back, push the ground away. Really work at keeping that knee into the chest. And then exhale, back to tabletop. Knees out wide, big toes together. Sit back, we're finding a child's pose. Grab our breath. Melt that forehead down to the mat. And if you reach those fingers out long and you reach your sit bones toward the heels, you're gonna start to stretch that back all on your own. Some nice traction. So again, it's not what it looks like, it's what it feels like. So can you feel your back stretching from the base to the top? If it's a little too intense, then don't reach quite as far. Finding that breath. Nice and rhythmic. And then slowly coming back up to tabletop. Spreading the fingers out, feeling those knuckles, tuck those toes. We're gonna push the front of the mat away as we come back to our first down dog, raising those hips high. And taking a moment here to walk out the legs. Having one leg bent, one leg straight. Maybe hold that for a breath, really feel the stretch on the one side. And then switch over, checking in with your other hamstring. And then slowly coming into stillness, those knees can be bent. So in our down dog, those fingers are gonna be spread. The fingers almost claw at the mat. You're pushing the front of the mat away as you lift those hips high and then letting the weight come down the heels. We're going to come back here a few times today. But right now we're going to walk those feet behind the hands, bend the knees, find your forward fold. Feel the feet press into the ground as you sweep the hands forward and up, coming up high and reaching high. And bring those hands to the heart center and by your side. We're gonna do just one half sun salutation today. So standing tall, exhale all that air. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, hands to shins, extend the back. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step back with your right foot, then your left, and so you find another down dog. So feel free to um, adjust your stance. We're gonna bring the feet together at the back of the mat, and then lift that right leg high. Again, it doesn't have to be high, it's just gotta be off the ground. Really feel your fingers connect with the ground. And then we're gonna bring the knee into the chest, holding it there, just like we did in tabletop. And you're gonna move forward over your hands, almost like you're coming into a plank. So you're really holding that knee up, you're pushing the ground away, you're arching your back like kept. Except this time we're on our foot instead of our knee. But you can drop to the knee at any time you want. And then reach that leg back three-legged down dog. And let's try that one more time. Bring the knee into the chest, float forward into plank. Arch that back like a cat and push the ground away. And this time we're going to begin to kick a soccer ball with that foot. Pretend you're kicking the soccer ball, flexing the foot, maybe coming up on the fingertips and seeing if you can reach that foot in between. Finding your lunge, you can drop that back knee. Hands come to the thigh and let's just take a moment in our low lunge. 
after that little bit of shoulder work, that little bit of hip flexor work. And I'm gonna reach behind my back today, reaching those shoulders out, finding the breath. And releasing those hands, rolling up the wrists. We're gonna bring the hands back down to the mat, tuck the toe, lift the knee. And we're gonna practice stepping all the way forward. So put a lot of weight into your front foot and see if you can lean forward, press into your front foot and bring that back foot to meet the front. Beautiful. And then sweep those hands all the way up down through your heart center and by your side. Okay, if you're feeling a lot of core and some shoulders and some butt right now, that is totally normal. So let's try that on the other side now. Exhale all the air. Inhale deep. Exhale long. Inhale, sweep those hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step the left foot back, however it gets there. Then the right, however it gets there. And find your down dog. Take a moment to find a comfortable down dog. Spread those fingers. I know some of you may have laughed when I said comfortable down dog. I remember when this was the hardest pose ever and my arms would just shake. Oh my gosh, it will get better. Let's bring those feet together. This time we're gonna lift the left leg up. Remember you can drop on the knee if you would choose. You're slowly gonna bring that leg into your chest. Really hold it there. Find your cat back and move into that plank shape. So you're thinking, push the ground away, a nice cat back, knee into the chest, and then extend back to three-legged dog. Try that one more time. Let's bring that knee into the chest, find our cat back, push the ground away, really feel that shape, making room there for your leg. And then let's kick that imaginary soccer ball looking between our hands, maybe coming up on the fingertips to make room for that foot, and then find your low lunge. Taking your time here, just settle in and refine your breath. Option to reach those arms behind you and interlace your fingers the other way. Rolling those shoulders back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. I love this one when I've been on the computer all morning, which I have. Then release those hands, let's roll those wrists. Plant the hands on the mat, tuck the back toes, raise the back knee. We're gonna get ready to step forward. So begin to put lots of weight on your front foot, leaning forward, leaning forward, leaning forward, and really push into the front foot to bring that knee in and nicely let it down, finding your forward bend. And then let's sweep those arms forward and up, reaching high. Bring those hands to heart center. By your sides. Close those eyes, stand tall. Check in with how you are feeling. Let upper body work. And all together, we'll exhale our air. Inhale. Exhale, sweep those arms up and sit back into your chair. Awesome. This feels pretty easy. I want you to sink a little bit lower. 50 minute class. Bring those hands to heart center. We're gonna do something a little different today. We are going to go from here to warrior three. So letting your left foot get heavy, right foot get light, we're gonna lean forward. 
and begin to reach that leg back. Flex the foot, reach it back. Maybe you want to open those arms to an airplane for better balance. Just a new way to warrior three today. And then slowly see if you can lower that back foot down and find your high lunge. And enjoy that knee transition. Reach those arms up. Maybe you want to reach up and over that high jump bar like you're having a little back bend. That was an Olympic high jumping, really arch. And then we're going to come back to high lunge. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to try and go forward just on this foot to the front of our mat. So leaning forward, really push the weight in the front foot. See if you can lean, 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 lean. Bring up the back foot. Bring that knee in and set it down. So we're also trying to build strength and movement on one side of our body at a time. So shake that out however that went. We have a lot going on here, which is why we're gonna stick with us for a few weeks. All right, standing tall, exhale all the air. Inhale deep. Exhale to chair. You find your depth. Where is it? A little bit of work for you. Because you did come to class to work. Bring those hands to heart center. And this time we're gonna do the other side. So right side, right foot gets heavy, left foot gets light. And then you get to lean forward, opening up those arms, shooting back the leg to find your warrior three. If you wobble, if your foot touches the mat, if you fall out, just try again. Because playing with our balance and wobbling and falling, it makes us better balancers in time. Slowly let that back foot, try for slow, touch the ground as you come up into your high lunge, your own speed. So your speed can be different than mine. Maybe you wanna stay straight, Maybe you want to add that back bend as you high jump over that invisible bar, proud chest, gaze at the ceiling. You guys got this. And then getting ready to shift forward on that front leg. So you're going to come up, begin to lean forward, really press into the front foot and lean, 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 pick up that back foot. Wobble like me or not. <laughs> Bring that knee in, set it down. Let's shake that out. All right. Want to try more balancing? I'm going to try more balancing. Let's step those feet, one hip width apart. Roll those shoulders back. Let's just take a moment to close those eyes and connect with your feet. Whether they're bare feet, they have socks on, just take a moment to check in with them. Where are your feet touching the ground? Is it possible to have your pinky toe side, your big toe side, and your heel all touching the ground at the same time? Maybe you wanna lift the toes, wiggle them out, set them down. We're just taking a moment to really root ourselves to the floor. Really spread out that connection point between us and the ground, that nice solid foot that keeps us up. You can open your eyes, shift onto your left foot, and your right knee is gonna bend, bringing that right foot behind you. Option number one to stay here. Option number two, if you're arm is open, you can grab the foot. You can also stay here. We're balancing. We're developing our balance here. Maybe you want to lift that left arm nice and high. Maybe you want to push your back foot into your hand. That might tilt you forward a little bit as you find your version of dancer pose. Whatever version you have, you are practicing your balance. You're here on your mat, you're moving. You're doing your body good. And then let's slowly bring that knee in. 
bring the arm down, release the foot, shake it out. Let's try the other side. So just reconnect with your feet. Find that even distribution of weight. Let the right foot get heavy, left foot gets light. Bend at the knee, hold the foot. And even here, sometimes I just like to press into my foot to really feel that pressure in my hand. And then reach the right arm up if you choose. And maybe you choose to press the foot into the hand to raise that leg up. And this is a quad stretch, it's a shoulder stretch, it's a balance, there are so many things going on in Dancer. So again, wherever you are today, accept. You are moving, show yourself some compassion, celebrate the little successes and the little failures. As I hop out of that, I encourage you to slowly get out of your Dancer as you come back in. And we're gonna shake that out. We're gonna bring the toes off the mat, heels in. Get ready to squat ourselves all the way down. So reach those hands up, hands together, and exhale, find your squat. Knees over toes. Really feel your feet connect with the ground. They're really gonna spread out and push the ground away. And your squat can be high, it can be a low yoga spot wherever you want, but I want you to try and extend your spine. So if it's curved, even if it means coming out of your squat a little bit to have that nice straight back, give that a go. Nice strong feet, nice long breath, and then slowly let's come down onto those sit bones. Bring the hands behind the back, feet out wide, and get ready to feel the feet, feel the hands, really let them connect, belly button to spine, and push into your feet and hands to raise your butt off the mat. Now I want you to think glute muscles nice and strong, and let them push your hips up into reverse tabletop. Finding your breath, your neck can be forward or back. Whatever feels good for your body. Really push your arms and feet into the ground. Squeeze the glute muscles. And then slowly lower down your sit bones. And then let's come on to the back body. Knees are bent. And just take a moment here. Place your hands on your belly. And just observe how you feel. This is where we started class. Before all of that strengthening and balancing and moving that we did. So how has class so far changed how you feel? How is the pace of your breath? Mine is a lot more rapid. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Teaching and talking some of those is quite difficult. So maybe notice your own breath, if the speed has changed, if the depth has changed. Notice if there's any areas of little fire in your body. And as your breath begins to slow, maybe you want to try that balloon breath. Picturing your favorite color of balloon. Bring it into your belly as you inhale nice and slow. Let that balloon grow. You can feel it in your hands. Admire the balloon at the top. And then slowly, maybe you want to do this part through your mouth. Let the balloon exhale. Slowly exhale and deflate the balloon. So just taking a few moments to allow our heart rate and our breath rate to come back to a less intense pace. We'll go with that. Well, 
When you're ready, you can bring your feet maybe a little bit closer to your sit bones so that when you arch up and reach forward, you can feel those Achilles. Your arms come along your body. Really feel your feet, feel your arms. And on an exhale, begin to lift your sit bones up, squeezing your glute muscles to lift the hips. You're really pushing the feet into the ground, squeezing the glute muscles together, lifting the hips high. And also think of that proud chest, that high jumper chest. And if you choose, maybe you wanna walk the hands under the back and interlace the fingers. That is optional. Just like a lot of things in this class. And then really push your arms into the ground too, to keep you up. Can you find a steady breath here? Squeeze those butt cheeks together. Push the feet into the ground. Find your breath. And then when you're ready, it's time to lower. You're going to think upper back comes down first, then the mid back, then the low back, and the sit bones. We're just going to rest here for a moment. We're going to try that one more time if you choose. If you are done with back bending today, you are welcome to take soles of the feet together, knees out wide. That's where we're going next. Otherwise, you can get ready for one more bridge or wheel if it's in your practice, you can do that too. Feel your feet, feel your hands, and then begin to push into the ground and lift those hips when you're ready. And then make those glutes work. Make those glutes also lift those hips high because that's a huge muscle group that we want to work as well. Maybe you want to think about the nice, proud high jumper chest. Maybe walk those hands under your body. Really pushing your feet into the ground, arms into the ground. Glutes squeeze and raise the hips up. And if today you just want to focus on your feet pushing into the ground, that's what you choose. Think belly button to spine and slowly lower when you're ready. Upper back, mid back, low back, and sit bones. You guys got it. And then you can let the knees drop out, soles of the feet together, and you can choose the distance here. And open those arms back into cactus or maybe out into a T. And those arms a little bit of an opening. Remember, it was always too hard to narrow for T arms. They used to be my favorite. And now I'm always doing cactus. Feel free to experiment with T and cactus. And see what works for you, what works for your space in your home. And then go back to what we did at the beginning of the class. Can you notice where your back body is lifting away from the mat? And observe where it's sinking into the mat. Just notice those different areas. And if you find a spot that's pulling away, for me, my glute muscle is still a little tense and it's wanting to pull away from the mat. See if you can use that deep inhale and long exhale while focusing on the area to see if you can let it release and allow you to start to sink into the ground. We asked our muscles to do a lot today. We asked them to engage. We asked them to be active. We asked them to push us away from the ground. And sometimes you just need to remind them after that. It's okay to mellow out now. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for helping me be strong and learn new movements and push away from the ground. But now you can relax. By using that deep inhale 
and long exhale. It just shows our body that we really do mean it's okay. You can relax now. And sometimes letting go of that muscle tension, it takes a few moments. Other times it can take quite a few minutes. So just observe what is happening today. And just allow yourself the space to encourage your body to relax. But being okay if that takes a little bit of time. And maybe you want to bring those hands to the outer parts of your thighs and bring those knees back together. We're going to bring the right knee into the chest. And this time we're going to wrap our hands around the shin and help it out a little bit. Tuck itself there. And that left foot can just stay on the mat. Bend. And then open your right hip, bring your right knee out to the side and set that right ankle on your left leg, making your bigger core. Pushing that leg away from your torso. And just checking in with your hip and your glute. Noticing if this is a good level of stretch for you today. And if you feel like you want a little more stretch, you can reach up and find that reverse pigeon, wrapping your hands around your thigh and leaning back. And yoga is about the sensation. So can you feel a sensation in your right that muscle, in your right hip? And staying in that nice Goldilocks zone where it feels like a good stretch, where you're working your body in a way that tomorrow you're going to be able to walk around like you didn't work hard at all today. We all know those days where we push a little too hard and the next day just it hurts to move. I don't want that for you. So keep that in mind as you stretch to find your joyful discomfort spot the place where you feel the sweetness of the stretch and it stays a good, safe stretch for you. you can release those hands, bring your foot to the floor, slowly unwrap the knee. And then bring your left knee into the chest, wrapping the hands around the shin, help it tuck in this time. You're applying some external force. You don't have to just use your own muscle engagement. We did that enough today, bringing the knee to the chest. And then open your left hip, left knee, swing that ankle on top to find your figure four. Just taking time here to really have your leg move away from your body. Check in with your hip and your glute. And decide if you want to remain in figure four if you want to move into a reverse pigeon, or even if there's another stretch that feels good for you. A large part of yoga is practicing listening to our bodies. And sometimes you may find I recommend a stretch or a series that's not right for your body. So instead of leaving your mat and finding your lunch, I encourage you to just find another movement that fits for you. Even if it's not what I'm doing, just stay on your mat and find that new movement, that movement that your body is craving. And then slowly you can release the foot down to the ground and cross the legs. Open those arms up to a T or a um, cactus, sorry, my Zoom distracted me. <laughs> and then let's drop those 
legs over to one side. We're finding a twist here. And bringing the head over to the right side. Just let this twist be relaxed. Those legs can separate, the shoulder can float. And notice where you feel this twist today. That can change every class. So where is this really feeling like it's hitting your body today? Where it's stretching that body out. Then slowly let's bring the head back to center, legs to center. And find the twist on the other side. And checking in here, seeing where do you feel this today? And be curious. On this side, I'm feeling a lot around my hip. The other side, I felt it on my shoulder. So just be curious about that for yourself. Sometimes it can give you ideas on ways you're sitting in chairs that maybe you want to sit differently or maybe it wants you to know, you know, you did a little bit too much the other day or that this is the perfect, exact, perfect stretch you need right now to bring some calm into your body. And then let's bring those knees back to center, gaze to center. And if there's any last little movement you want to add to your practice, you feel free to do it now. And we'll slowly meet in the final rest for a few moments. Reaching those legs out to the sides of the mat, heels to the corners. Let those toes just be. Reach those fingers down toward the toes. Taking a deep inhale through the nose. Long exhale through the mouth. Doing that a few more times to your own space, your own speed. Deep inhale through the nose and a long audible exhale through the mouth. And observe your back body. Notice where it wants to sink into the ground. We did a lot of strengthening today. We did quite a bit of active flexibility. We did some interesting variations on our warrior three entrance. And I'm proud of all of you for getting on your mat today and being here in minus 40 weather, even though we're, we're all inside. <laughs> we're still here on our mats, moving together. So thank you. If you have some time, you're always welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you are able. If you need to get off to class, off to work, then begin to wiggle those fingers, wiggle those toes. Reach those arms up overhead and take a great big fingertip to toe tip stretch. Releasing with an exhale. Plant one foot on the mat and then the other. And slowly roll on over to your side body. Pausing here for a moment to think of one thing that you are proud of today. And Feel that proudness. And then take your top hand and push it into the ground to help you up. Nice and slow and mindful. Come into a comfortable seat. 
rolling those shoulders back, finding a nice tall spine. Let's bring the hands together in heart center, tuck the chin, and we'll end with a deep inhale. And exhale. Letting today's practice go. Thank you for joining me today on our Thursday class. This is our, well, next week is February break week here at SAS Poly. So there are no live fitness classes. Our YouTube channel is still up with like hundreds of classes now of a bunch of yoga and a bunch of TRX and strength and circuit and spin. If you have a spin bike at home, there's a whole bunch of things out there, wellness breaks. So go check us out on Sass Poly Fitness for your classes next week. And we will see you in two Thursdays from now. See you later. Thanks, Sarah. That was wonderful.